now let's uh, go. To, I'm going to talk about the, some of the advanced functions of the station now. Uh, first, I need to explain about this card approach indicator first. Uh, this uh, indicator serves a dual purpose, actually. For the first obvious purpose is it tells a player that a card is going to be arriving into that uh, departure bay there. But also, when this indicator is lit, it also prevents uh, multiple card requests. So if I push this button here, and then keep pushing it again while that indicator lit, while that's lit, uh, any c further card requests are ignored. So that's a pretty good, nice feature. But s say for maybe uh, for no reason, this indicator uh, gets stuck in the on position. It gets still lit. Um, to alleviate that, you, you can go over to the other side of the station over here, to the conductor's office. And there's one conductor's office per direction. So for this is a southbound conductor's office. And there's another one, another boarding area for northbound, another conductor's office for northbound as well. So once inside here, you can see that we have a reset card approaching indicator button. And so you can, in the event that the indicator over there is lit up, you can push this button, and this will allow you to request carts again uh, in case the, that, that uh, indicator is lit. Now, I've never ever have to, had to use this uh, button before because I never encountered that glitch, but it's just, it's here just in case just in case of any sort of emergencies that uh, might arise. The other advanced function, which I think would be much more useful, is this uh, lever here. This is the flush dispenser lever. And if I turn this, flip this lever up, it'll attempt to flush all the carts from the dispenser and out, uh, out, out onto the overflow track. Um, actually, I'll demonstrate it right now. And you can see down there, the carts are now making their way out of the dispenser. You can also see it over here. That track there is uh, directed toward the overflow area. So, all right. So I'll just wait for it for all the carts to flush themselves out, all twelve of them. <coughs> There's one more. Yep. Oh, another one. Okay. So, yep. Uh, I have to also make sure after you flushed it, you have to turn this off. Otherwise, because when this is on, all the cart requests and uh, basically normal functions of the station don't work anymore. So, that's turned off. And uh, if we go over here now, you'll see that the dispenser empty indicator is lit, which means indicating that the dispenser is now cleaned out of carts. And uh, yellow call the carts are now here, and I can go pick them up like so. So that's that. Um, all right, so that's enough about advanced functions. I'll, I'll go over some now, some extra things I've put in the station here. Next to the conductor's office is uh, the cor little corner of the station, and I've designated this as some future retail space. And you can use this to put in any sort of uh, things that you want, like bookstores, coffee shops, or lounges that you might want to put in the station. So this gives you a bit of a custom, custom, customized leeway here that you can put whatever you want here. Also throughout the station are these uh, maintenance hatches, which I've already went through with them. These ones allow you to, when, to say you allow you to go down to the maintenance level and perhaps it makes it easy to fix uh, any uh, jam carts in the dispenser or that sort of thing. It's also these all these hatches also act as emergency exits. So in case players somehow get stuck down there, they can go to one of these exits and climb out uh, to safety onto the public level. All right, so that's all we need to see at Tundra Station. Now I'm going to go head down to Mountain Station and uh, show you how it all works. All right, so I'm going to request a card here. Actually, I won't board this one. I'll, you probably notice there's a note blocks that are sounding. The low tone uh, indicates that a card is approaching. The medium tone uh, will play whenever a cart arrives in one of the slots. And a high tone indicates that a cart is about to leave one of the one of the arrival bays. So it's a, just another audio cue for you to, uh, for the player to um, understand what's going on. So there's a medium tone there. And now we're going to head off. Ooh. Took a damage there again. All right. Oh, it's actually snowing. I'm going to turn off the weather here. One sec here. Because I don't want the video to lag. Right, the snow disappeared. So um, included in this uh, version is uh, some actually some track schematics now. So you have station schematics and track schematics, which, and, which you can use to attach between stations. We're actually we're on them right now, and.
and some of them, like that chime you've heard before when you're arriving in Tundra, like that, that's also included, as well as the signs as well. So you can uh, mix and match and use whatever fits your preferences. So here I'm at, at Grassland Station. I'm not going to leave the cart. I'm just going to stay in it. And I'll miss the part as usual. So I can just keep on going. Just stay in the cart. Don't need to uh, do anything fancy like that. So here we are. We're heading toward Mountain Station now. And we're going through this underground tunnel. And I'm going to show you the next one last bonus feature that I put into the station. Hopefully I can really good time. It's a button on the right hand side that comes up just before you get into the station. And this actually skips the platform you're actually on. Oh, there we go. So there, I just skipped the southbound, no, the northbound platform. And actually, it's actually going to turn me around and go on to the southbound platform. So what that button, that skip station button, actually I'll go over around here. What this does is it simply switches the uh, main track mat, the main track switch for you. So this can be useful if you just don't want to wait uh, the four seconds in that arrival bay. So it's just a convenient thing. You can see there the track switching there. All right. All right, so to end off this video, I'm going to talk about some of the schematics that you can import into your own world using MC Edit. The first of which is the very basic half station schematic. You probably don't need to use this schematic unless you're doing some sort of custom station design, or you can use it for terminus stations at the very end of a transit line. Instead, most of the time you'll probably use a two-way full station, which supports two directions. And all stations come in three different types, underground, ground level, and elevated. As you can see, the only real difference uh, is between these types is where the windows are placed on the outside. Now, all the station schematics come with a very flat roof by default, but you can attach an add-on roof schematic to the top of the station to give it more character. Uh, you can have arched roofs, which are similar to Victorian area station roofs in England and Europe. You can also have pitched or triangular roofs as well. Also, just like version 2.1, you can customize the outside colors of the station so that it can be made more easily identifiable as part of a larger transit line, such as the red line or the blue line. And finally, uh, you, there are several different track schematics that you can choose from. There, first, there's the very basic standard track schematic. And there's also the sign schematic, which uh, makes a sign in one direction the, to notify players of the next station and other advisories. It's kind of hard. These signs are kind of hard to read while traveling at high speed, but they're there anyway. There's also the chime schematic, which is a detector track attached to a note block, again, notifying players of upcoming stations. And finally, there's a turnaround switch schematic, which is a simple button attached to a track switch, which allows the player to turn their cart around and reverse direction. All right, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. Again, the Minecraft save file and the MCX schematics are available in the video description as a download link. Uh, if you have any comments and questions, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, if, also, if you again, if you uh, uh, decide to use these stations in your multiplayer server, especially, uh, please let me know so um, I can perhaps even visit your server and take a look and perhaps give you any guidance in that regard. Right, once again, uh, thanks for watching and see you later.